Hello, TikTok. Welcome, welcome. Just gonna give you guys a quick tour of what I got here on the Mushroom ID table here at Mushroom Camp. So I'm at the Circle Pines Center here in Michigan. It's a little cooperative place and it's absolutely gorgeous. There's like a big farmhouse and there's trees and fields and sort of little cottages and um, areas for camping all over the place. Um, we've had not the best uh, weather for mushrooms. It's been kind of dry previous to this, but it did rain some when we got here. So there's some beautiful polypores on a log and a really big, awesome uh, Ganoderma that somebody has uh, done some, some beautiful art on. So it's really cool to see this uh, here in Michigan. And it's my first time in Michigan, my first time going mushroom hunting. Just a ton of mushrooms that I'm gonna show you guys here quickly. I'm um, gonna try to lead you through as many as I can in just a couple of minutes, cause we're about to leave. Um, I've been here with Gabrielle, Chaotic Forager, and we're both butt ass tired <laughs> cause it's been a long couple of days of mushroom hunting and, uh, and life just, you know, takes a toll on you. So here's a really cool one. Um, De Dahlia Quercina. So this is a polypore, but it's a polypore that has kind of gills, and there are these really incredible looking um, sort of geometric, you know, maze-like looking gills. And this is called the uh, maze polypore. Um, the person who's asking to be a moderator, I've never seen you on my lives before, and I haven't interacted with you personally, so until that is the case, I don't think I'll make you a moderator. Um, but check out the cool gills on this polypore. There's another species, um, Dalyopsis De De configurgosa, something like that. So it's another polypore. You can see all these striations of rings of growth on the cap here. And some really cool um, kind of maze-like gills, which is really, really neat. So um, we've got more polypores here. We've got a sterium. So... This one is sometimes called a false turkey tail because people confuse it for a turkey tail. It looks like it, but there are no pores underneath. This is a surface, a uh, very smooth pore surface. Um, so there's no pores. Um, this is a cool one. Um, this is, God, what's the common name for this? I don't know, Foam's uh, Gravelens is a, it's just a big woody mass of polypore stuff. You can kind of see somewhere in here, you can see the little gills. Um, it's a really big, just chunky, solid mushroom it's pretty interesting uh this is the resinous polypore I've seen lots of this out here the stuff um gets kind of tough as it grows when it's young it has a very sort of like beef like texture and flavor says gabrielle i haven't actually eaten it yet i keep meaning to try this but um haven't had it yet um here's a famous one everybody knows it's my taki griffla frondosa is a beautiful edible mushroom um we have tremedes here so this is this is very related to uh, Chimese versicolor, the turkey tail, but Chimese versicolor has tiny little pores underneath, and so that's how you can tell the difference between Sterium versus Trimedes here. Sterium has no pores, and Trimedes has pores. So, a lot of people get that wrong. Um, it's pretty common. I've seen a lot of videos here on TikTok of people misidentifying Sterium as turkey tail, especially people who are selling mushroom products, and they're trying to sell you something as Trimedes versicolor, but in fact, it is a sterium. It's not toxic, but it's not what they say it is. And I so always be very careful of people who are selling you something, because more often than not, they're more concerned about profit than they are about correctly IDing species. Uh, no, these are not all edible. Many of the things I've showed you so far are just wood, woody, tough polypores. So they wouldn't be edible anyhow. Um, so this is just one of the cool Tremedes that has kind of these maze-like gills, and I've been really geeking out on these things that have the cool maze gills. Um, this is Polyporus radicatus. Um, I posted a video of Gabrielle tapping this exact mushroom. Really nice taps on that mushroom. It's pretty cool. Um, but this is called the black rooting polypore. It has this long black stem that goes down into the soil, and it looks, it looks totally wild and weird and strange. Um, but I really dig it. Um, I like hollandaise with everything, not just broccoli. Hollandaise is a great 
great sauce. Um, but yeah, this is a big, fleshy, awesome polypour. Apparently this is edible. I didn't really find allusions to it online. Uh, but I talked to some people who said they'd eaten it and they liked it. So pretty cool. Uh, what else do we have here? We have a Tilopolis. So it's a bolete. We didn't see many bolets because it's been getting kind of cold, but it also has tiny little pores underneath. And I know some people get like trypophobia from this kind of stuff. So please don't report me. I'm not trying to trigger you. I'm just trying to show you um, bolets and the fact that these little holes are actually made up of a bunch of little tubes that hang down from the cap. Um, so that's what you're looking at. Uh, we have some violet tooth polypore. Some beautiful purple uh, polypore. Trichaptum biformum is the species name. Um, so we have xylobus. That's kind of a weird looking crusty thing. We have some more Tremedes species. We have the black footed polypore. Um, what do they call it here? This is Pisceps badius. It's got a slightly different name in California, but it's the same. Functionally, it's the same mushroom. Um, we have Ceriporus squamosus. So this is a dryad saddle. A bunch of these things. Pheasant back. Pretty common. Um, we've got lots of chicken woods. We found so much chicken woods. That's probably the most populous edible mushroom we've gotten this year. No, these are not all edible. Um, these two are. Dryad saddle and chicken woods are edible. But many of the other things on this table are not edible. And it's not because they're poisonous. They're just really tough and woody. Um, there's also, like I was showing earlier, the Griffla frondosa, hen of the woods. Um, this is an edible mushroom. So chicken of the woods, hen of the woods. And they're side by side. I know they have similar sounding names, but they look totally different and they are not related. So big orange, orangey yellow polypore is chicken of the woods, latiparous, and this kind of gray frondy one is uh, Griffla frondosa or maitake or hen of the woods. So you can get to know the difference. Um, we have some different uh, polypores here. Probably Ganoderma species. Yeah, this is Ganoderma. What is this? Ganoderma lobatum. And then here we have probably Ganoderma aplanatum. It's another artist conch. Um, we have one little chanterelle. So that's an edible mushroom. Um, it's a smooth chanterelle. We have probably Ganoderma aplanatum. It's another artist conch. Um, we have one little chanterelle. So that's an edible mushroom. Um, it's a smooth chanterelle. Chicken of the Woods doesn't particularly taste like chicken, but it does take on the flavor of whatever you cook it with, just like chicken. Um, so that's that's a thing. Uh, Climate Codon. So this is a big um, shelf fungus that has little interesting little teeth underneath. Um, oh, I like this. It's called a Northern Tooth Fungus. And we have a bunch of Scleroderma. I know these are really boring mushrooms for some reason. Every time I post a Scleroderma, it goes viral. I don't totally know why because it's just like a weird little lump but you guys really like scleroderma so there it is um these are geastrum these are really cool these are called uh earth earth stars because they uh open up into little star-like shapes like this and then they're kind of like a puff ball so they're full of spores um here's a little bit of a uh stink horn we cut this open yesterday and it took a video of me cutting this open. well i guess uh, chloe cut it open i took a video of her cutting it open so there's just stink horn Posted some other videos recently of stink horns. Um, what else do we have here? We've got Jim Pilus. Um, Gymnopolis. I don't know, however you say it. I say stuff kind of weird, and I'm always happy to be corrected by people who know better than me. Um, it's a little bit like when you read Game of Thrones and you think everyone has names that sound different, and then you watch the show and you're like, oh wow, they sound completely different than I imagined them sounding. Um, here's a Cortinarius. Um, these are pretty common. They have these little webby, cobwebby things under the gills. There's tons of Cortinarius biodiversity. It's probably the most diverse uh, genus of gilled mushrooms that's out there. Um, again, what I'm showing you is just our ID table. I'm not addressing edibility, and uh, I'm just showing you guys cool stuff because it looks cool, and I'm here at Mushroom Camp. So this is a Foliota squamosus, and squamosus is often referring to kind of the, the hairy, spiky, appearance of things when it's in the species name. Um, foliotas are often poisonous, but there is one edible species called Foliota adiposa, which is sold as the chestnut mushroom. So here's a, oh, here's a Hyphaloma. This is not Hyphaloma um, fasciculare. This is a different species, but it also glows at night, which is pretty cool. Um, here's some Copernopsis. So these are sort of ink cap type mushrooms that will melt as they mature. 
Um, we have, oh, we have a bunch of this little, this walnut mycena. This is cool. It's a little yellowy mycena thing. Um, some clotosibi. So a lot of people try to pronounce this clotosibe, but it's clotosibe, at least when I've heard it pronounced. Um, we just have a mess, whole mess of different kinds of mushrooms on here. Um, anyone recognize this one? This is something that they hid out in the woods. <laughs> it's like spray foam, but they were calling it foam, spray foam of the woods as a joke. Um, so uh, I'll take you guys over to see the Ascomycetes real quick. Um, there's, a, there's a real big, cool Amanita hat that somebody made. That's great. Um, so Ascomycetes, we've got some of these eyelash cups. Uh, Scul Scullinia. I've been scan saying it wrong, but Scullinia is how you say that. We have little red elf cups. You guys may have seen these in some people's videos. Um, we have little green elf cups. So there's different kinds of Ascomycetes that form little cups. Um, these are called fairy cups, tiny little yellow cups. These these looked cooler when they were not dried out, but it's it uh, it has been dry last day. Um, these are big chunky Zylaria. These are super cool looking. These are sometimes known as dead man's fingers. Um, big Zylaria, very interesting. But these are all ascomycetes, so their spores are in an ascus, which is kind of like a sack, and the spores are inside of it. And often these are pressure sensitive sacks. So if wind goes by and, and you know, this is pressure sensitive, the wind kind of deforms it a little bit and then it bursts and shoots its spores out. So that's what um, morels and a lot of other ascomycetes do, like cordyceps. Um, it's all pretty cool. We have some other little um, ascomycete balls, these Daldinia things on here. Actually, these are hypoxylon, sorry. These are Daldinia um, and you can see these gradations, rings of growth inside of the Daldinia uh, fruiting body. So, pretty cool. Sometimes these are known as uh, King Alfred's cakes, because apparently King Alfred was terrible at baking cakes, so uh, they're just hard little black lumps. Um, <laughs> uh, I will show you guys edible mushrooms in just a moment. I'm just finishing my roundup of all the mushrooms that are out here. Here's the rest of the ID table of things that haven't necessarily been ID'd or put on the table. Um, but there's, there's a good mixture of things. This is an interesting one. It's called bear cone. It doesn't look like much right now, um, but earlier in, this, in the year, it's yellow and it's really beautiful. It's a non-photosynthetic plant that is uh, parasitic on mushroom mycelium. It's called a microheterotroph. I've done a bunch of videos on those if you want to check them out. They're pretty cool. Um, some different polypores, random guild mushrooms, some coral, all these little like coral things. Um, yeah, it's just been fun being here at Mushroom Camp, learning about mushrooms and geeking out with a bunch of other mushroom nerds. So I'll take you guys over and show you one more tour of some of the edible things, and then I'm going to sign off because uh, it's time to leave Mushroom Camp, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm going to go hang out with a Chaotic Forager and probably make some food, or something like that. Um, so yeah, this is Chicken of the Woods. This is an edible mushroom. Oh, looks my connection's a little unstable. Sorry, I'm, you know, we're out kind of in the middle of the woods, so Wi-Fi out here is, is uh, patchy at best. Anyhow, this is Chicken of the Woods, Latiparus sulfurus. Uh, this mushroom camp is at a place called Circle Pines Center in Michigan. And uh, that I have that hashtag in a couple recent videos. It was hashtagged in Gabrielle's recent video of the beefsteak. Um, so this is Chicken in the Woods. It's a good edible polypore. We've been eating a lot of it this weekend. This specimen is probably a little mature. Um, the leading edge of this mushroom is usually the most tender part of it. Um, we have maitake, Hand of the Woods, or Gryphla frondosa. So this is a great edible mushroom. Um, I really, really like this. This is one of my absolute favorites. But this is Chicken of the Woods, and this is called Hen of the Woods. So while they have similar names, they look very different, right? You can tell these apart. <laughs> this tends to grow often on the side of trees, and this is usually growing under the base of trees, although this can also grow at the base of trees, but the color difference really should help you tell the difference between uh, Latiparus versus uh, Griffola, right? Um, the resinous polypore, Ischnoderma resinosum, is, uh, is an edible mushroom. So this is, when it's young and fleshy, it's pretty soft and velvety, and uh, Gabrielle says it has kind of like a beefy, beefy flavor a little bit, 
um, which is interesting. I haven't tried eating it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we didn't find any cordyceps here. I found a bunch of cordyceps in, uh, in Vermont when I was there, actually, which was cool. This one is called Dryad Saddle, uh, otherwise known as pheasant back, but it's Cereoporus squamosus. So check out the cool pores on that. When this thing is young, it's, it's edible and decent. It kind of smells like cucumbers. Uh, this Polyporus radicatus is apparently edible. It's a big, big fleshy polypore. Um, what else we have on the table that might be edible? Ooh, Jaraporus cyanescens. So this is a little bolete that seems very, very blue. I've posted several videos about it and it is edible and good. Uh, what else do we have here? We have one chanterelle. A little, little chanterelle. We're hoping we find lots of these, but we got one. So chanterelles are edible. I have done many, many videos about those, so check them out. Um, we've got Clemacodon septertonalis, and this is the northern tooth fungus. This is edible when young. It's okay, but not great. Uh, we have Heresium corolloides. This is a little dried out specimen, but this is related to lion's mane. When it's white and highly branched, it's really, really tasty. I like uh, that even better than lion's mane. And it has all the potential health benefits that lion's mane would have too. So just giving you guys a big overview of all the cool mushrooms here on the table at the uh, Michigan Mushroom Camp. It's been really fun. We've been at Circle Pines Center here in Michigan. And uh, yeah, I'm just kind of like taking you guys around this mushroom table, showing you all the cool stuff we found this weekend. Um, right now, I'm going to actually maybe go out on a little bit of a hike to try to find some truffles, which would be kind of cool. So here's a big old Ganoderma artist conch that somebody made. Super beautiful. I really, really like it. Um, and before I go, I will puff a few of these puff balls for you guys because I know that people love to see that. So just little, little poofs. Whoop. 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 <laughs> Just puffing them. I'm getting some spores in my fingers, but I'm not worried about breathing them in because um, they're not coming right towards my face. So, yes, that is a mushroom. You are correct. This is what puff balls are called gastroid fungi because the spores develop on the inside. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Normally I do, do this in slow mo so I can capture all the, the action, but you guys are, are watching it in real time. So that's what. That's what the puffballs look like. Woo! Woo! My hands are completely covered in spores now, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you don't wanna you don't wanna bring in, breathe in too many of those spores. That's that's no bueno. Oh, here's one more edible mushroom. Uh, this is Jaraporus borealis, I guess. This is what's often known as the chestnut mushroom, so it's an edible bull eat. Um, this telopolis could be edible, I'm not sure. I don't know the stuff out here in the Midwest quite as well as I do the stuff back in Massachusetts or California, but it's all interesting and it's all fun. Uh, so I very much appreciate you guys watching, paying attention. Hopefully I got you excited about some mushrooms. Um, there are good edibles on the table and there's also some just really cool, cool looking stuff like this oak maize gill. This is really impressive. Um, we do have uh, Trumides that has kind of cool little like maize gill things. Um, not all things that are puffballs are edible, but if they're all white inside, they're probably edible. Um, if they're black or purple at all, then they're an earth ball and they are not edible. This is a Tremese Versicolor, the classic turkey tail, and it has little pores underneath. Looks great. Um, if you're in California, Sonoma, Mendocino, we have Soma Camp. I'm a board member on uh, Sonoma Mycology Association, and we host a mushroom camp every year, although it is only for members, so... Um, are we eating mushroom dishes at camp? Yes, we've been eating chicken of the woods uh, the whole time. We found lots of chicken of the woods, so we've been eating a lot of chicken of the woods. Um, it's been good, good stuff. So I'm excited for rainy season in CA too. It's part of why I'm in Michigan right now, because it is dry in California. And so I came to Michigan instead. Um, yeah, I'll show you guys one more time. Uh, I've got sterium here. It's called false turkey tail or false parchment. And this is Tremides versicolor. Um, but they're not robustly. You can't tell the difference always from the top. What you have to is look at the bottom. If you look at the bottom, sterium is basically smooth, whereas the Tremides versicolor has tiny little pores and uh, underneath. 
And so you can just check that to help you tell the difference between what is a turkey tail and what is a sterium. And per usual, be very skeptical of anyone who's trying to sell you any kind of tincture or uh, anything where they're taking lion's mane or turkey tail and they're putting it in alcohol or water and they're trying to sell it to you. It's kind of a scam. Um, and I frankly, I know there's a couple of creators here on TikTok who do that. And I don't, no shame, no shade to them because they're just small. Search, learn things, um, be curious, be fascinated. I hope that you guys all have learned something by watching this and, uh, and are excited about mushrooms. So anyhow, thanks again for tuning in and uh, learning about mushrooms with me. So if you want to learn more from me, you can check out my website, fascinatedbyfunga.com. I've got some cool t-shirts. I have little neck guards. Um, I have some mugs. I have some other stuff. I have an FAQ section where you can learn all about mushrooms, get all your mushroom questions answered. I have a mushroom discount section where you can get uh, codes to save money on mushroom kits and the knife you see me using all the time and mushroom coffee and jerky and all that kind of stuff. Oh, Minnesota Mushroom Art, you're on here. Um, I want to show you something because I thought this was really cool and this is totally up your alley. Uh, big, beautiful artist conch, uh, Ganoderma that somebody brought by and did some really beautiful work on. Um, so if you guys don't follow Minnesota Mushroom Art, she does this stuff professionally and, uh, and it's really beautiful and I love seeing it.